Good morning, saints. I just thank God this morning for the threshing floor. <laughs> you know, we're all still on it. We know by the way we get tossed up all the time, but it'll be that way until he gets everything off of us that don't belong there. He wants pure grain. I love him. I appreciate his grace and mercy. I look to him daily for leadership and direction, correction. Father, this morning we look to you once again, giving thanks for your mercy and grace, Lord, and for the way that you deal with us, O oh Lord, to make us true children of God. We're so thankful this morning that we can proclaim thy precious name above every name, that we can look to you, Father, in every trial and test that we have. In all the turmoil that's around about us, O oh Lord, we can have peace in the midst of it because of thee. Glory to your holy name. Would you just come among us this morning by your great anointing. And let all the songs and all the testimonies and the word of God that's brought forth be with a special anointing. And may you, O oh Lord, deal with us as children constantly like your word declares that you will. It's our desire to be chastened when we're wrong, O oh Lord. And, Lord, to be corrected and brought into the right way of thinking in every situation. We pray for those, Father, that are still out in other places, drifting. And, Lord, not where you would have them to be, but we know that you don't lose any that's foreknown of you. We thank you for that this morning. And everything is so precious in your precious word. And all the promises and, and provisions that we have to look to, oh, God, we're such Blessed people, bless your ministry this morning, O oh Lord. Anoint them, O oh God. Keep them daily fresh, refreshed and anointed, we pray. Give thanks and honor unto thee in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Glory to God. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, for to His wonderful face. Like you, 
Your mercy flows like a river wide Comes from your hand Suffering children are safe in your arms There is none like you There is none like you No one else can touch my heart like you do I could search for all eternity long And find there is none like you When low in spirit I called on your name And you heard my prayer You lifted me up and you set me free No, there is none like you There is none like you No one else can touch my heart Quite like you do I could search for all eternity long And find there is none like you Lord, there is none, there is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I could search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. Many times do you wonder how you made it this far? That's God. And when you realize it wasn't as bad as it seemed, that was God. When you were sitting all alone with not a friend to talk to, and suddenly a stranger calls with words to uplift you, which seemed just out of the blue that was God oh that's God he's walking through my darkest night his spirit is descending with power and might and his love it surrounds me and wraps my soul safe and tight oh, oh that's God he's walking my Other than God, oh, that's God. He's a walking through my darkest night. His spirit is descending with power and might, and His love it surrounds me and wraps my soul, save and tide. Oh, oh, that's God. He made a way. For eternal life sent his son to die. What a great sacrifice. Who nailed on my sins to the cross. Brother, that's God. When your body came out of the sickness. Oh, that was God. And when you had no money and someone provided. That was God When you were hungry and tired And no rest could be found Now there's food on the table And a place to lay down Just look around at all your blessings Brother, that's God Oh, oh that's God He's a-walking through my darkest night And His Spirit is descending 
with power and might, and His love it surrounds me and wraps my soul, safe and tight. Oh, 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 that's God, He made a way for eternal life, sent His Son to die. What a great sacrifice, who nailed all my sins to the cross, brother, that's God. Many times do you wonder how you made it this far, that was God. And when you realize it wasn't as bad as it seemed, that was God. When you were sitting all alone, not a friend to talk to, then suddenly a stranger calls with words to uplift you. Seemed help just come from out of the blue, that was God. Oh, oh, that's God, He's a-walking through my darkest night. His Spirit is descending with power and might. And His love, it surrounds me and wraps my soul, safe and tight. Oh, 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 that's God, He made a way for eternal life, sent His Son to die. What a great sacrifice, who nailed all my sins to the cross. Brother, that's God, oh, that's God. He's walking through my darkest night. His Spirit is descending with power and might. And His love, it surrounds me and wraps my soul safe and tight. Oh, oh, that's God. He made a way for eternal life. Sent His Son to die. What a great sacrifice. Who nailed all my sins to the cross, brother, that's God. The little ones are saying to you this morning, I am God. There is none like me anywhere in the universe. I am the one that controls all things. I am the one that hears every prayer and sees everything that's come upon my little sheep. And I am the one that you shall turn to and put your all into it that you might be found ready for the day that I come for my people. I am the one that you shall call to. You shall get on your knees and not to worry, but believe. By all means, believe the word. Thus saith the Lord. All right, you all can be seated. Sister Tammy? No. Sister Tabitha? Would you be able to give us a song? And how about the Shaw family after that? Oh, 
touch me and now I am no longer the same oh he touched me oh he touched me and oh the joy that floods my soul oh I know something happened and now I know he touched me and he made me whole since I met this blessed Savior all oh, sins he cleansed and made me whole oh, I me and oh the joy that floods my soul oh I know something this blessed Savior and sin he cleansed and made me whole oh I will never cease to praise him Oh, he touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Oh, I know something. And now I know He touched me And He made me whole Amen. Thank you, sister, for that. All right, if the Shaw family will come on. Brother Gray, Sister Sharon, how about you after that? For living is gone 
And the trials have taken your song. There's an echo of the truth, and it's ringing in my heart from my youth. But He won't keep you from the trials, but He'll surely keep you through. But He'll keep you through the fire when it becomes a furnace. He'll keep you through the waters when it becomes a flood. He did not make what he could not keep. He did not start what he can't complete. What he does not keep you from, he'll keep you through. He'll keep you through the fire. Comes a furnace, and he'll keep you through the waters, and it becomes a flood. He did not make what he could not keep, he did not start what he can't complete. What he does not keep you from, he'll keep you through. Didn't keep Noah from the flood that came. He didn't keep Moses from forty years of pain. Now there's Daniel, Paul, and Silas, and the Hebrew boys, just to name a few. What he did not keep them from, they knew that he would keep them through. He'll keep you through the fire when it becomes a furnace. He'll keep you through the water when it becomes a flood. He did not make what he could not. He did not start what he can't complete. What he does not keep you from, he'll keep you through. He'll keep you through the fire when it becomes a furnace. He'll keep you through the waters when it becomes a flood. He did not start what he can't complete, but he does not keep you from, he'll keep you through. you all for that. All right, Brother Greg, Sister Sharon, Jason and April, how about you after that?
Nope. We're often facing battles and it's hard to keep the pace Cause Satan never lets up in his fight winning place But I have the Lord to guide me every step along the way When Satan comes against me you can always hear me say Oh that's no hill for a climber that's no battle for a child of God. Satan's already been defeated and the victory's been won. Jesus won the fight on Calvary when he died for you and me. Now Satan, get behind me cause I claim the victory. Every time I try to do a little something for the Lord, Satan tries to block my path and keep me from my goal. But I don't care how high the hill may seem to me today. I'll take my Savior by the hand and he'll help me when I say, Oh, that's no hill for a climber. That's no battle for a child of God. Satan's already been defeated and the victory they won. Jesus won the fight on Calvary when he died for you and me. Now Satan, get behind me, cause I claim the victory. We're often facing battles and it's hard to keep the pace. Cause Satan never lets up in his fight for winning place. But I have the Lord to guide me every step along the way. When Satan comes against me, you can always hear me say, Oh, that's no hill for a climber, that's no battle for a child of God. Satan's already been defeated, and the victory's been won. Jesus won the fight on Calvary when he died for you and me. Now Satan, get behind me, cause I claim the victory. Oh, every time I try to do a little something for the Lord, Satan tries to block my path and keep me from my goal. But I don't care how high the hill may seem to me today. I'll take my Savior by the hand and he'll help me when I say, Oh, that's no hill for a climber, that's no battle for a child of God. Satan's already been defeated and the victory's been won. Jesus won the fight on Calvary when he died for you and me. Now Satan, get behind me cause I claim the victory. Amen. Thank you all for that all right. Brother Kevin, how about you and Sister Sandy? Thank the Lord for being with us last night. We were driving home and it was dark out and we weren't too far from the house and there was a, a curve that comes up right before the house and I saw the lights of a car up in front and I just didn't think anything of it. I was just driving along. Well, he never did get back on his side of the road. He stayed all the way over on the right side and there were mailboxes along the road and I had some heavy furniture in the back so I didn't want to swerve and I just hit my brakes and hit the horn and he swerved over right before he hit us head on and I'm just I'm thankful that um, the Lord was there with us and kept us from being in an accident. You know I, I was thinking not to take too much time but I was thinking today when before we 
Brother Turner prayed, and he said he was talking about the threshing floor. You know, I I really agree with that, and that got me to thinking about the uh, the saints that have walked this way for a long time, and like Brother Turner and the older ones here, and I, I look and I, as a younger person in this church, I just want to praise the Lord that I can look to examples in this church that have walked this way a long time. And it's, it's an inspiration when I see the older ones that have fought this fight for many years and they still have the faith and they still have the victory in the Lord. And I just want to, I just want to thank God that I can read the Bible and I can see what the Lord's will is. I can listen to the ministry and I have examples that I can look at in this church that have followed the Lord a lot of years and I just want to thank God for that. Lord, I don't want to do one thing on my own. Put me where you want me, Lord, where I belong. Give me the strength, Lord, to do thy perfect. Take me home to that promised 
for that all right brother kevin sister sandy for me. I don't know if I can do this, but I'm going to try. A country where no twilight shadows deepen. Unending day where night will never This is just 
just what heaven means to me. Amen. Thank you all for that, and thank you each one of you for your songs. Let us all stand. I'll have Brother Allen come, and Sister Virgie is having some problems back there, so I'll get him to pray for our sister. All right, let us remember our sister this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, we grateful to you for another day of your blessings, your grace upon us. Lord, we see that we have a sister that is struggling back there. We pray that, Lord, your hand would be upon them, upon her, I mean, Lord, and that you would touch her body. Lord, though she's weak and body, we pray that the strength of faith may rise up in the congregation to be of benefit to our sister now at this time. Lord, she's a part of the body and she's a part of you. Lord, that part that is weak this morning, we pray that you would build it up, that you would show strength unto our sister. As the ones that, Lord, have the experience of nursing and things as they wait upon her, we pray your hands would be upon them and upon her, Lord. May you be merciful to the need. May you grant, Lord, the request as we look forward unto you. Lord, for this service today, <clears throat> we pray your hand would be upon it that you would minister to your people, that you would meet their needs. Lord, encourage each heart and each spirit, Lord, of your people that would be downward today. May you lift them up. May you be, give peace of mind unto each saint of yours. Lord, you know all about it. You know all about all of us. And there's nothing, Lord, that you do not know. We pray for your guidance now in this service that you would lead, that you would move. Lord, because we need your moving in our congregation today to speak to the people that your presence is here. As you did on the day of Pentecost, Lord, you manifested yourself. Let it be so today, Lord, in each heart and life that you would manifest yourself. Thank you for this opportunity now, Lord, that we have to look into you and look into your favor. Bless now your people, we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Brother Bud. have a wonderful opportunity today to be able to look into God's Word and look for answers to those things that might be questionable to us. But we know that God has an answer. 
I've had these scriptures up for several weeks now the, that I've never gotten to. I did uh, go to book of Second Peter for my subject, and I'm going to look at that before I go into Romans this morning. I was asked the question this morning about Iran because I don't know where that it has come from, but some seem to think that if a, if Israel bombs Iran, then that will nullify Ezekiel 38 and 39. But... Uh, Israel is just after their reactors to knock them out that it may be uh, something that they can stop them from having a nuclear bomb. That has nothing to do with Ezekiel 38 and 39 because Ezekiel 38 and 39 is still in place. There will be a Ezekiel 38 and 39, but I'm sure that if, if and when, let me put it that way, God knows. If and when that Israel should knock out the reactors, then that is going to anger your Middle East mower, and it's going to give them more ammunition as they feel to uh, go ahead and do something to Israel. Thank you, Brother Bud. Brother Bud said there will be an ambulance come to get our sister, so uh, don't let it disturb you. But... uh, what that I was getting to in that that uh, I have been watching it in the United States doing everything they can to keep Israel from uh, going in there and taking care of the problem. But Israel is finally finding out that the President of the United States is not their friend. The majority of them in America, the last election, voted for Obama. The Jews I'm talking about. I couldn't see why then. But I can't see why that they even think about it now. Because if you look at a root news any at all, you'll see that the leadership in Israel, much of the Knesset, don't believe that Obama is their friend. We do have senators and congressmen now that are standing up against the president to show favor unto Israel because they realize that uh, Israel has no friends in the Middle East. If it wasn't for the grace of God, they would not be a nation. By the grace of God, they are a nation. And they're going to remain to be a nation. They're the only people in the in the Middle East that can claim that they are original. Dating back into the BC period. 
One of these days, Israel is going to get all the land back that belongs to them. There will be a war before Ezekiel 38 and 39 that will bring Israel back into her possession. But it's got to be, it's got to start in Judah. They were showing a couple of the cities. One of them is Janine and the other one is uh, Sederalt. I may not have pronounced that right, but anyway, they have, uh, the Sederalt has uh, been, it showed 2,000 houses, which you never see on the news, have been bombed. 2,000. It showed that some of them, they're just shells left is all they are. And when the sirens sound for Israel to get into safety, they have 20 seconds to get into a bomb shelter, but Many of them don't have a bomb shelter. Many, many Israelis have been hurt. You don't hear that. By these bombs, but it showed them. Laying screaming bloody all over from these rockets that are, that go in there from from the Arab sector. So today the tensions are great. And as I said, Israel has not a friend in the Arab world. But looking at at the situation, I remember... As I've mentioned before, Brother Branham said, God and one is a majority. So, with the angel of the Lord, which will be Michael, with the angel of the Lord before him, and it said, Revelations 12, Michael and his angels. That means that he has followers when the battles start. His brother Jackson always referred to that Michael is Israel's warring angel. And today... This is not my message, but the message is, though, God's grace. But it is the grace of God that has placed Israel back there in this time and every day since they've become a nation. They have been on alert since 1948. Because of the enemies that they have, they've had, I know of four major conflicts. Maybe five, I know 1948, 56, 67, then in the 70s and then 83. And it could have rose to be a conflict whenever they, uh, whenever Lebanon war three or four years ago. Don't know exactly when, but three or four years ago when Lebanon began to try to start a war with Israel, 
pushed by the enemies of Israel at that time. Syria now is in great conflict. These conflicts are over. And it's always worse after they're over than when it was than when it started. We are today looking like that we're going to get out of Iraq. And I think they've set the year 13 for the getting out of Afghanistan. I think they had it 14, but now they've moved it back. I just heard that yesterday. That they're moving it back to 13 to get our troops out. Of course, they're, going to, they're planning on leaving so many in there. I don't know why. Because whenever Russia tried to defeat the Afghanistan people, it never happened. Now then, it looks like it's not going to happen again. Because we never fight a war to win a war anymore. They don't let the troops go in and do what they are meant to do. Because you've got so many appeasers in the government today that are willing to go along with anything but never settle anything. But one of these days it's going to be settled in the Middle East. Only by the grace of God will that happen. And whenever God gets into a battle, then the battle is won. We had, we've had so, four officers in the last week that has been killed in Afghanistan because they said they made a mistake in burning some of the old Korans. And there have been at least three apologies made by our government. I saw three. But nobody ever apologizes because that Christians are being slaughtered. And I'm talking about the Christian world, the Coptics in Egypt are being slaughtered, nothing ever said. But yet they bow over backward to apologize to Karzan when he's just a, a rogue leader. No no better than Noriega was. And some of the other leaders of, of nations that have been taken out of the mist. Nobody apologized for these four soldiers, these four officers that were killed, went right into our compound and done it 
Karzai did not apologize for that. And they found messages in these Korans that they had. They mentioned that at first, but they never mentioned it anymore. Where that they were sending messages one to another. They had written messages concerning our armed forces. These things are never mentioned. We just always got to apologize to somebody. It used to not be that way. So it makes me wonder where the government leaders' minds are, where their heads are. You'll have to pardon my thinking. But it seems that we got more sympathizers than we have people to stand up. And whenever our young men are being slaughtered in a battle that will never be won. Why why apologize to somebody that is that kills Christians and nothing is ever done. Nothing is ever said. I know they're not believers as we are, but some of those people have done done nothing to cause the conflict that is going on. We got so so called spiritual leaders in this country. And I'm calling them so-called. That have united Christianity with Muslimism. With Catholicism. And all the other isms. Great leaders that have sprung up in this nation that had a austere motive in their mind many years ago. The church world would hate me for my thinking. But when I've heard it out of their own mouth, it lets me know that somebody's heart is not right with God. They may have the attention of the world, but they don't have my attention. I wouldn't walk across the highway to hear them preach. But whenever they want to unite Christianity with Muslimism and call it Chrislam, then you're not a Christian. Don't even claim to be. Even though you do.
And I'm talking about some of the religious leadership. Brother Branham made the statement in nineteen and in the nineteen and sixties, early sixties. He said that Billy Graham and Oral Roberts were the two represented the two angels that went down to Sodom. And I guess that I waited years to see that manifest. Now I have. Nineteen and seventy four. And even earlier than that, Billy Graham was preaching that was having his great crusades here in America. These stadiums were full. And he was in with these archdioceses. with the cardinals and bishops telling them you get your people out to come to our crusades and I will send you the people back to your churches. You remember in the early 60s, how that up here at Notre Dame and in Canada, there was a move going on that the Catholic nuns were speaking in tongues. They were calling it the Great Revival that was sweeping the Catholic Church. What has it changed? It was blinding. It was what it was because the light of the Seventh Church Age was going out in America. Then it completely folded so people today the scripture that I read last week from the book of Proverbs get wisdom and with all your getting get understanding And the Bible speaks about understanding what the will of the Lord is. And we will never know what the will of the Lord is without an understanding of His Word. Some of the visitations that we have here in the service is a manifestation of the Word. But you take the word out, out of the visitation, then you have an empty shell. I turned on the television the other night and they had some big name preachers that are rising to the top of the latter now in this time and whenever whenever they started it and the music that they had 
They're jumping all over the platform and boys with tennis shoes on their paints to here you could see their white socks. And if you turned, which I don't, if you turned on to some of the secular stations, it wouldn't be any worse and sometimes not as bad. That's the type of people that every week I get on the, in, in the internet. that wants to come here for to teach our young people how to how to have service and teach the preachers how to preach to bring in more young people why why don't if we're going to do that just open it up to the world and say come on in Sometimes I know people think that you're hard. It's even been preached about that we are too hard here at Faith Assembly. But when I see some of these splinter groups, You, you, you begin to see that the Word of God is taken a beating. And they want to integrate. They move with us. Which as long as I'm here, and I can speak for Brother Bud, that won't never happen. You just well to hang up your shingle and go your way. There have been a standard set here at this church for many years. that have kept certain things out. I know there's a, a man one time wanted to talk to Brother Jackson, a preacher, wanted to talk to Brother Jackson. So Brother Jackson take some of, took some of us upstairs to, talk, to let him say what he had to say. And he began to talk about that him, Brother Jackson, would be going to it, be the two prophets to Israel and all. They always wanted to put somebody else in because they figured that they can pay the way. And uh, he said so much and Brother Jackson just stopped him. And the man looked so surprised and Brother Jackson told him, said, you know what you're saying and all scares me just about as bad as a mouse run across this floor. You say, well, that was rude. No, that was straight. Don't pull, don't pull that stuff around here. I see... The way that the world is going this morning used to be an old saying. The devil is taking it to hell in a hand basket.
That's a, that's a hard saying. But when I, when I hear people which wrote a, some kind of a book one time, I never did read it, it's supposed to be a great bestseller, Rick Warren. Robert Schuler, the head of the Campus Crusade. Billy Graham, and they mentioned others, that now then they are appeasers with the Muslim religion. I said Billy Graham. Let me know when I hear things like that, that what Brother Branham said, that they are the two angels that went down to Sodom to blind the people. Billy Graham had one one idea when he started out. and When he started out, he wanted to be like Moses. He wanted to be the greatest evangelist that ever lived. The biggest evangelist, I mean, that ever lived. He become that. To preach to more people at one time than anybody else ever has. Now then he's an old man sitting in a rocking chair with somebody else almost having to wait on him. But the Bible says their works do follow them. You say, well, I know people that were converted under Billy Graham. That had nothing to do with Billy Graham. There's even people that come into this congregation, into this message that were converted in a Billy Graham crusade, but that didn't have nothing to do with Billy Graham. God can use, maybe I better not say it, He used a donkey one time to stop a prophet. And and to me this morning, you take the word out, you don't have nothing left. You just got a shell. I've I've got a slide of Abraham which I'll put up. Abraham wasn't called out of Ur of the Chaldees for nothing. That, that old man walked or rode a camel or a, a donkey or something for hundreds of miles before he ever found out what the will of God was. Because God said, follow. He followed, not knowing where he was going. But he kept following. And because of his obedience, he come out of an unbelieving, godless Bunch of people. And brother and sister, I feel today that in America we're living among a bunch of godless people and godless preachers. 
that don't know a bit more about God than than that old dog laying out there today. And I'm not condemning the dog. He's doing what he's supposed to. He's laying out there. But on the other hand, these are doing what they're supposed to do because it said in the end time there would be a falling away first to let us know what time we were in. And there's a song that goes this way. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. He satisfies. And it also says, no turning back. I'll read my scripture again. Which I want to get into Romans, but it looks like I'm going slow. Second Peter. I started in the 14th verse last week. I think I'll go back to the 13th today. Nevertheless, we, according to the promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Everybody that is fortunate to make it there, they're going to know why they made it there. And they're going to know how they made it there. We're not on television. We don't have to be. We are on the internet, which it will reach every place that it's supposed to. Jesus speaks unto His disciples, and He calls them a little flock. And today, we are a little flock. This used to be a song goes... This is not an easy road, but it is a safe road. And by the grace of God, we will, we will cut down the bushes and the briars and the, and the snags and with the, with the sword of the Word in order for people to walk through. Or if you're in some parts of the world, you'd call it a machete. God didn't call His Word a sword for nothing because it is something that works. It's sharp. And the Bible says sharper than any two-edged sword. To cut down to the heart, down into the marrow, into the bone. Because God's going to get every ingredient of His Word. We, we see preachers now on television. They've gone... From preaching the Word to selling vitamins. I'm not against vitamins, but that's not the Gospel. 
And then from that to exercise, and the women don't wear enough clothes to cover anything. And they show their bodies to the world. And the Bible says, He that looketh upon a woman to lust after her has committed adultery in his heart already. And if a woman, if she presents her body in that way, then she is a part of it. She's a part of that adulterous act if she presents her body in a way to make herself to look that away. You don't see a thing in, in these scriptures that I'm going to read that makes you look like the world. But it will, the Bible says we are in the world, but we are not of the world. So a couple weeks ago where this man tried to get this little girl, seven year old girl in a, in a Walmart, Tried to, tried to take her and she began to kick him and scream and hit him and he had to let her go because somebody had told her what to do. But I'm wondering where the mother was. If you have to put these little children on a leash to keep them close to you, do it. We live in a, in a godless world that there's somebody always looking for something in order to appease their perverted mind. And I mean perverted. Only a devil would want to take a little girl and abuse her and then kill her. That is, that is how the pits of hell. And the thing that should happen to them, they shouldn't have a trial. They should be hung in public. And will you say, well, that's wrong. That would get rid of that one. Well, you preach hate. The thing about it is, God hates it too. So I'm saying, brothers and sisters, keep a watch on your children. If you have to put them in a car, if they're four years old, to keep them close to you, they may scream and holler a little bit for a little while, but they'll shut up. We live in a dangerous, degraded hour. The Bible said it would be like this in the last days. So where are we? In the Middle Ages? Well, it could be a hundred years. That is a lie. Well, God's time is not like our time. But He said, when you see these things begin to come to pass, lift up your head, your redemption is getting nigh. And whenever I see these preachers that I mention, plus others, when I see them appeasing people, I, Billy Graham even said, I heard him say back in 97, 
They were showing uh, excerpts of what he said. He said, there are people that don't even know the name Jesus Christ that are Christians. Let's just open the doors. Yet, go and bow to the Pope. Brother Branham was in Rome one time and he had a chance to have an audience with the Pope. And he asked asked the man, said, do I have to kneel to him or bow to him or kiss his ring? And the fellow said, yes. He said, I will bow to no man. So he missed his audience with the Pope. Only thing is, the Pope has just got a Pope mobile. <laughs> Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of Him in peace. Without spot and blameless. What do I see when I look in the mirror of the the morning or the afternoon? And am I seeing the image of Jesus Christ or am I seeing Something that wants to be something different. If I'm going to be different, God make me different. And account that the long suffering of the Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest. They, we live in an unlearned and unstable world. Back in Proverbs again. Get wisdom. And with all you're getting, get understanding. What are we teaching our little children? I see these mom now, then it's little boys. Four and five year old boys that they are putting in beauty pageants. And little girls, they are dressing them up like women. I say women, not sisters. They're dressing them like women, putting them out here to display them before an ungodly Generation of ungodly men. You're not parents. You 
you are Jezebels. And you're trying to make your daughters look like Jezebels also. That's not beauty. Let me see a little child be able to play and to play with some kind of a little toy or a little girl play with a little doll. Don't dress your little sons up like hell riders. All this garbage and bandanas around her head and stuff. Where did they learn it from? What's wrong with a little boy pushing a truck around? Acting like a acting like a little boy. What's wrong with the little girl carrying a little doll around? I remember Brother Jackson saying something like that one time, talking about his sister. Said that she had a doll when she was 11 or 12 years old and people laughed about it. A doll at 11 or 12 years old. I remember those days. Because what were they doing? They were learning how to be mothers when they got grown. And a 12 year old is not grown. Don't make them look grown. Make them look like children of God of what you want them to look like. You say, the way you all preach, no wonder faith assembly don't grow. We're not trying to grow weeds. Or saw bars. If we're going to grow, let us grow on the Word of God. And the Word of God teaches us how to live. Which they that are unstable, unstable rest. As they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Don't come to me with a twisted scripture. It, te- it tells in the Bible, there in, in, in Ezekiel, like chapter 30 and along in there, that a, a, a man of God is a watchman. That's sitting up on the wall. What did the watchman do when he was sitting on the wall? He was looking for danger. And that's what I'm talking about today. Don't think that this was something I planned. (laughs) 
There's sometimes it's better off just let your friends go if they're not going to follow God because it, there come a time when Abraham had to separate from Lot. And there are times, sometimes it would be better off that we would separate from Lot. Because Lot had one eye on Sodom from the very beginning or he wouldn't have chose it. He went down with plenty and come out with nothing. You can't follow a revelation without a revelation yourself. And I'm not mad. I'm just angry with this nation of what it's become. As I said back at the beginning, always going around everywhere and apologizing for our soldiers. You make me mad. Whenever you can't shoot unless you're shot at, it's a little too late then. To begin to shoot when somebody else has already got got the aim on you and the trigger ready to pull it and you don't even have your gun drawn. The Bible, there in the fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians, gives you a pattern of how that we are to arm ourselves. But it don't leave out the sword. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Paul, I mean, Peter here is talking as kind as he can here, but he's talking straight. He said, Ye therefore, beloved. He's talking to Christian people, but he's telling Christian people to not leave spots and blemishes. I'm not saying things today that we can't do, but uh, but the thing about it is we make it hard to do. Seeing you know these things. When you're looking into the mirror of the Word of God, you're not looking into a mirror that you look at every day because the thing about it is you forget what you look like when you walk away from that mirror. Well, I read it this morning. But I had opposition. When that opposition comes, that's the time to use it. That's the time to use the sword. Seeing you know these things before. Beware. 
lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked. What is wicked? What is wicked? It's anything that walks away from the Word of God. That's wicked. Fall from your own steadfastness. What he's saying is, one time you were steadfast. But he said, falling from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace. My subject, grow in grace. It is a growth process. Each day that we walk, we are to inch up, not to go down. What, what affected me yesterday? And I'm not talking about of yesterday as something in one day. I'm talking about through the years. The things that one time that affected me should not affect me now. The Bible speaks about the present truth. I can't I can't see that third day you wasn't willing to walk in present truth. But to but to the saints of God that's a settled thing today. I'm not, I'm not saying that to keep hammering on that, but there's other things that God wants to do whenever He fills up a vacuum, then on down the road there comes another vacuum that He is going to fill also because He's going to keep us digging. You know, my thought this morning is I drove here to church. And am I ready for this morning? And I begin to search. And then I get to church. I don't know if anybody else was raising their hands while they're singing or not, but I was because I wanted to put my antenna up to Him in a surrendering way. I wonder what that man had in mind when when he wrote, I surrender all. The Word of God should become a daily habit to us, but not make it a habit. Make it a a desire. Then we can sing the song, Walk with me, Lord. Talk with me, Lord. Some of those old movies of 
some of those men that were kind of that wasn't playing the part that they were all all there. They stuck out among all the crowd because you'd see the old sergeant yell, get in place. Whoop, two, three, four. Whoop, two, three, four. Get in place. Get in step, soldier. But those sergeants, they didn't repeat it very many times. It used to be, I don't guess they can do that now. It used to be they give you the boot. I never was a service I joined. Come over here, come over here to Louisville and, uh, had, had my physical and all. They didn't need anybody out there in the Air Force. They took me in the Navy or anything else. They didn't need anybody. Cause you had to have a lot higher grade than what I made. But there's five of us come. We was like ducks getting in a row. Five of us. And two of them got on the bottle that night. And they took my blanket. Got ready, got ready to go to bed. The old sergeant there, he is a marine sergeant. Oh, he trimmed me down. I thought, well, this is the wrong place for me. I'm already being got on when... And you know what happened? The next morning, they sneaked the extra blanket in. Left me hanging. But then he got friendly. Sergeant, he got friendly. He just showing me I wasn't boss. And like it or not, the Word of God is the boss. And we got to step in line. We got to get in step with this. Now I've just about stepped out of time. But grow in grace. It's not going to be but a few few weeks from now. You're going to see that grass that is dead in those trees that look like that they have lost all life. You're going to see them begin to spring up and that grass begin to grow. And I hate it. <laughs> Why can't you just stay dormant? <laughs> Boy, my age growing up. He had a, he was about six years old and he's telling, he's afraid his daddy was going to die. He said, I had a, I had a cousin said he mowed and he died. He said, I had an uncle, he mowed and he died. And he said, I'm afraid my daddy's going to die because he mowed. That's all a joke. <laughs> Which wasn't much. I have not said the things that I have said out of anger or out of malice or out of trying to put myself above you. I'm saying it is time that we all grow in grace and in the knowledge 
of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and then apply these Scriptures to our lives. We know what it takes. Brother Bud, we're not without knowledge. We know what it takes. It is deciding that we are going to do what is God's will no matter what. Heavenly Father, Lord, You know my heart this morning that I had no plans of going in this direction. But you know, Lord, what your people need. And you know what I need. I pray you'd forgive me my shortcomings. That you would help me. Because you are our Heavenly Father. Lord, by this, with your Spirit in us, Lord, help us to resemble You, to begin to look like You, to begin to see Your plan for our own lives. Lord, I'm not asking people to see hands today to see who is walking in the way of truth as they should. Father, I'm looking for Your favor for our lives that we may be built up in the most holy faith. Help us, Father. Lead us in this hour in the way we should go. Lord, that when we stand before You, which none of us know what day or hour that is for our own lives, may stand before You, Lord, without being ashamed. Help us, Father. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. May God bless you. Amen. Thank you for that, Brother Allen. I don't know about anybody else, but I felt an urgency in this message. God is speaking to us. Are we listening? Will we take it to heart? Or will we just pass it off as, that's an old fogey? God is dealing with us, brothers and sisters. We're getting ready to go home. Let us all stand. As Brother David comes, if you feel the need for prayer, then you feel free to come right on.
times the tempter tries to bring me down when I go to you in prayer I know you meet me there I can make it through the day when I take the time to pray and I start my day with you when I start my day with you Lord there's nothing I can't do although sometimes the tempter tries to bring me down when I go to you When I take the time to pray, let us start my day with you. Well, I appreciate what we've heard today, and I just magnify the Lord and appreciate Him for His tender mercies and grace that He sheds to each one of us and have a good day and remember your brothers and sisters remember sister virgie in prayer throughout the day so brother kevin would you dismiss us in prayer for another opportunity that we can come together and assemble to hear thy word lord spoke in spirit and in truth lord yes. Father, we ask now that you would go with us as we depart this place, Lord. May you go with each one of us and lead and guide and direct us. Yes. We ask a special prayer, Lord, for our sister Virgie that has been taken to the hospital. Lord, may you just be with her and meet her need, Lord, and whatever yes. this condition is. We just pray that you will take control over it, Lord, that you would just meet her every need. Father, we commit all things to you now, and we ask it all in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. May the Lord.